Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful soft valley painting with a lot of depth. Of course, if you're enjoying these and you want to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. We'll start off today with a little bit of our white and our clear gel. I just thought for fun I'd show you how to do how I like to do the base coat. I just scrub it right on. You see, I got a pencil sketch today. The reason it's a little complicated, and I just didn't really feel like sketching it out with the brush. And I, won't, I actually did this yesterday. And I have obviously prepare to yeah, kind of make the everything set back up because I bounced from acrylic to oil. And so I set it up yesterday and I think I don't really want to, I don't want to mess with it. For me it would have been tomorrow. Anyway, you know what I mean. So I grabbed a pencil and I sketched out what I wanted to do then. And so now I just jump right into it this morning. It's kind of easy. So sometimes you can do shortcuts like that and kind of make your uh, painting time, well, more time for painting, you know, same amount of time, more painting. Anyway, there you go. That's kind of how I put the medium on the canvas. So about 50-50 mix. It's really good. You guys should try it. That's good stuff. It works well. All right, blue and white right up here. We're just going to drop in a soft, soft little sky. Not a whole lot today. Now we're going to go ahead and underpaint this area. I'm doing it with tones of blue and gray. Obviously more blue in the background, more gray in the foreground. Well, the foreground of the background. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Cool. A lot of this is going to actually be covered with other stuff, but hey, you got to start somewhere, right? There. See, you just, very important here that you just get a little bit darker as you come forward. You don't want it so dark that it comes forward to, you know, like the foreground, but you want it dark enough to show, eh, we're getting a little closer. I'm going to go right through there. Nice. Now, I'll tell you what, we're going to actually put some highlight on here, and when we do that, I think we should do it in um, kind of green tones and golden tones of grass, but the underpainting will be blue and that'll help it to look further away. I think that'll be just just the right effect. We'll see. If it doesn't work, we can always change it, right? You never have to worry about stuff. So we can always change it. Cool. Actually, tell you what, right back here, see this area is kind of blank. We need a little bit of a, yeah, there we go. Just an extra bit or two just to indicate more layers trying to build a lot of layers in this painting. It's good for you guys to see, see all these layers go in because when you work on your own paintings, you want layers. So just think to yourself, you know, how can I build in more layers without making the painting too busy? It's not so hard, really. Not so hard <laughs> not to make the painting busy. Not so hard not to, not so hard to build in a lot of layers. Easy to build the layers and you can do it. It's a lot of fun, actually. There we go. Just enough contrast to show against that sky. Now let's go ahead and drop in another mountain. This one's quite a bit bigger. You see, the thing about it is we want, I think we really want this kind of, well, uh, we've got to find the right word for it. Um, kind of unexpected mountain up here. You know, it, it, normally when people paint, me too, when we paint a big mountain, we put it in the middle or, you know, off to the center and make it the feature. This is not the feature of the painting. This mountain is going to be hidden back here, and you'll only just barely see it through the trees. Why bother? Well, I think it's going to be kind of a surprise. I think it's interesting. And I think doing something unexpected every once in a while is a good thing for your paintings. Yes. <laughs> there we go. There you go. So that's my, that is my thought on this. So we're going to do kind of an unexpected little mountain right up here. Just a nice, nice simple mountain shape like that. Very tall, almost off the canvas. Cool. Set that brush down because that's taking way too long. Let me get my, what was that two inch brush that I was using earlier? And some dark color and just mush it in. Just underpainting still, just having fun. <laughs> kind, of a, kind of just a relaxing day, just having fun. Now with a nice soft light color, I wanna just, you see I already tested it up there. I just wanna make sure that we get these little highlights on our mountains before we get too far. It's easy to run through this painting and oops, <laughs> forgot those little mountains back there. I do like the idea of getting a little bit more in. You see, I threw some green down here to indicate a tree, maybe some land, just the underpainting. Remember how you underpaint with depth. You don't want to just underpaint with a solid color. This way, when you put the highlights on, you already built up some, um, you already built up some areas of depth in there, you know, setting yourself up for some success, if you know what to mean. <laughs> there we go. All right, right up here. Yeah, that looks pretty decent. So light's coming across like this. And we just sort of try to catch these little highlights. Just 
touch them here and there. Fairly soft, low, low contrast compared to sometimes. Right in here, another little peak. It's good to do a few peaks, you know, you don't want them at all the same. So there you go. Mm. Very little paint here. That's why this is kind of almost leaving a open, broken texture, which is cool. The more you rub it, obviously, the more it picks up the paint underneath, and then that texture kind of goes away. Doesn't matter. Just be aware of it, you know. Sometimes you do want it to go away. Cool. Just continue kind of building out this mountain. And then we can also probably do the same idea back there. Just get a little highlight out on it. Kind of get it ready to ready to move forward with. We need, we need it to finish before we can start doing too much of the foreground. Now I've located my trees up here and now I can finally start banking them in. These are going to be birch trees. Uh, since they're going to be birch trees, that color's not quite right. That's kind of dark. Birch trees, I think, look better when they are a little more vivid. Yeah, well, <laughs> the blue and the yellow will make it more vivid. There we go. <laughs> You'll notice that I said I think they look better, not that they always are that way. So if you want to paint them darker or even autumn, ooh, they're really good. Actually, they might look better autumn color than in the spring, but hey, whatever. <laughs> there. This one is not autumn color, although I did actually consider doing it that way because a lot of my birch tree paintings are in autumn because they're so pretty. I decided not to because we always do it that way, or a lot of time we do. I just thought it'd be fun to do something a little different. Yes, so of course we do multiple brush strokes. We don't just get up here and do one old stroke. Actually, I don't know why in the world I painted those in black. Let's, uh, what was I doing? <laughs> I was sketching and I was just grabbing a color because it didn't make any difference. Here's some white. Uh, but anyway, what I can do is just cover those up and then look, hey, automatic birch texture. That looks cool. And then we can highlight, of course, as we normally would. There. They do need to be white though, so may as well do it now. There. Mm, that is so pretty. I like these little negative spaces, so be sure to leave those. You don't want to cover everything up. And if you particularly like a spot in your painting, well, really don't cover it up. If you particularly don't like a spot, be sure to cover it up, right? That's kind of how it works around here, at least. <laughs> Let's fill in this kind of empty area with some evergreen trees. You see, I actually filled in uh, kind of these trees with some evergreens. After I worked that birch tree down, I thought, wait a minute, this really would look better with some evergreens mixed in as well. So I did that. It just matches the scene a lot better. I think it works with the scene, you know what I mean? Matches the scene, I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> there. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna work these evergreens right back in here. The, the way we'll keep them, well, separated for now is I'm, I made the birch trees as you can see just a fraction lighter and warmer than the evergreens. The evergreens have more browns and blues in them. There we go. Now I'm just adding a backdrop here and we'll cut in a beautiful meadow back there. It'll be really really pretty I think. This is just a wonderful way to fill this area in without a whole lot of worrying about it. <laughs> yes that looks decent doesn't it? Alright and just kind of I'm just kind of figuring this out as far as tree placement as we go along. I know I had a sketch in there, but I kind of lost it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, the tree placement's kind of simple. You can do it wherever you want, really. You can even do them really quick and then just detail them out later when you, when you want to. You don't have to do it right now, which is a bonus. Bring that one up. Lots of different colors. Subtle, you know, it's dark. But there are different colors, very important. Now let's quickly mix up a, a nice underpainting color for our land down here. Let's do the, let's do the little washed out area first. I love these washed out areas, by the way, in case you didn't know. They're a lot of fun and I don't know, they're just something kind of nice about them that I think just looks, they look impressive when you do them right. And I, and I think I like that about them. That's what I like. <laughs> there we go. I think they just add a very interesting note to the painting. There. So we'll do them. <laughs> oh, there we go. They're super easy too. They're really not in any way difficult. You just throw some color in like I'm doing. 
maybe a little darker kind of as you go back, create a little depth in the underpainting. You know how we like to do that. Scrub it in. Leave these beautiful variations in there. If you get a little too much paint, you can always wipe it off, but I, I like those variations, so we'll leave them in as long as we can. There. And over here, maybe, oh yeah, right here. This is a little darker on this side. Let's get some black into the paint mix here. Much darker on this side. Create some depth here. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's fun. Now I'll tell you what we can also do is take some green, just a little bit of maybe some yellow in there as well. It's all kind of mixed together at this point. Mm, that's pretty. And let's underpaint our foreground land. That looks good. You want to always build depth in the underpainting. Mm, this is fun. I get excited about stuff like this. We can get in here and scrub this in real real fast and just enjoy, enjoy your painting time. And right over there, green. I decided, it took me three seconds to decide. <laughs> there, oh yeah. And then some brown. Now I laid down a mid-tone real quick, just in the dirt and also in the grass. So now I've got my detail round. And this is the fun part, we're gonna put the highlight on. The detail round is softer. I did this with a filbert brush to cram it into the painting, to the canvas, I mean. Really get all that texture and paint smooshed in there nice. And then I come back with a very light touch. This is the key. You can just layer on a little more light, which really helps to sparkle this area up. Don't you think? <laughs> there we go. This is just an accent highlight. So you don't need to overdo it. Just stroke it like this, kind of work it back maybe. Less highlight back here, because you have to imagine the light's coming across like this. We're gonna have some shadows there in the grass. You can even change to a fan brush, kind of get some texture as we go down. We may or may not choose to do that. There we go. Oh yeah, that's looking good though, isn't it? I like how that sparkles. You can just take a little of the green and just touch the green down here so it looks like other things are happening. Mm. There. Now, I hate to get this brush dirty, but let me just show you what I want to do as we go along. Take a little brown or black, whatever, and I want to just outline, there, just outline the underside of this grass, give it a little bit of a drop shadow. That looks about right. <laughs> there we go. See how that makes that just... Give it a little more depth, makes that nice. That'll do. Very, very cool. Now I took just a couple seconds and pulled it down for some birch tree action. <laughs> there we go. Now I've got to be careful here because I don't want to lose my mountain. I want to see my mountain through the leaves. I may not even, well, I'll tell you what, okay, we gotta, there we go, push it back just a little. I may not go over it much more than that though. So I'm just gonna do these big clumps of leaves over the sky, we don't care so much. But the last thing you wanna do is clog this painting up. So I'm gonna be very, be very, very careful with this. There, I'm just using my comma strokes and my detail round, and oh, over here is not quite as important. And kind of a mid-tone green, not a very dark green, it's important. We can always add the darks later, but I wanna make sure that we have a nice highlight before we do that because it's very easy to highlight over a mid-tone. It'd be hard if this was black to highlight over it. Now I'm just finishing up here with this tree doing the highlights. You see I did the highlights on the other side. There, you just drop them on pretty quick. I like to hold my brush way in the back. I have small, small brushes with long, long handles. Actually all of our brushes are that way. They have long handles except well, <laughs> all the small ones that is. The reason is because I'm, I want to do detail, and, and in order to do that, I don't want to overclog this area. And this being able to step way back helps quite a bit. So I'm painting further away than I would maybe otherwise do. And I'm, it gives me a better look at the painting, you know. So just dabble these on. I'm using a lot of paint and reloading frequently. I know the urge is to thin the paint. Don't do it. Grab more paint, because once you thin that paint, you're done. It's all over. You will not get an accent highlight. You won't get shadows if you need them. It's just bad news. I would, I would spend the extra five seconds that it takes and reload after yeah, two or three or four strokes. There, the moment it stops coming off bright. 
Yeah, it's starting to look good. And leave a little texture. It's an oil painting. You may as well leave a little texture. People like that. Pay extra for that sort of stuff, don't they? <laughs> All right, I love it. Fun. Gotta have fun. If you don't go, if you don't have fun, you go crazy. <laughs> you might go crazy anyways, right? That's okay. Now with our detail round, I'm gonna slide on a little highlight right on the right hand, right on the right hand edge of the tree. There we go. <laughs> Sometimes just don't have any better way to say stuff like that. Anyway, I went ahead and lightened these trees. I don't mean to stop talking, it's because I'm concentrating. Uh, I went ahead and lightened these trees up just a little. I felt like they needed it, but it's okay to kind of start darker on these and then build them up as you build the other stuff up around it. Let me just drop in right up here as well. You see no pressure on the brush because if you start to press down, you also see the way that I'm holding it. If you press down, you're going to mix. We've got a lot of layers. We're in the final stages of this painting. And this is kind of, half the way, half, uh, kind of the way you have to treat it. Build up lots of texture. That's okay. I usually like to do the darks last on the, ever, on the evergreens, on the birch trees. Yeah, can you tell? <laughs> can you tell I've been painting a while here? There, that looks good. The reason I like to do the darks first is because, I, well, it's just easier. You know, imagine trying to highlight over that. Good luck, right? In fact, look at how difficult it is to put the dark over this many layers of paint. We're going to go ahead and finish up this painting with some tall grass, which is, as you might imagine, a good way to finish it up. We'll also do, well, we got the liner brush out. We'll do some limbs and stuff, but this grass, I think, will probably take more time. We're going to just build up a little more detail in the foreground helps to bring this area, this area kind of closer and I don't know, makes it look better. We won't, however, put this grass, of course, in the background. That would ruin all that depth that we've worked hard to get going. Okay, that was a kind of a complicated explanation for something that's really simple. Oops, oh well. You guys know that I just stand around here and have fun. That looks good. Okay, so I'm just just working back, getting really small. Kind of let them dissipate off. Now let's get a darker color. Thin that down just a little more. And let's go right over here with this darker color. Yeah, that's good. That's just enough. It stands out. You can cover up the base of your tree trunks that way. But it's not so much that it looks shiny or takes away from the overall feel of the painting. It's just here. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Rushline. Thanks for watching.